and she was around and she loved to sing me these these uh, body ballads. Um, they were inappropriate for, uh, for a young person, but that's what I loved about it, you know. She wanted to keep this tradition alive that my father had started of, of singing these old, of old uh, uh, English drinking songs. Uh, really, all the British Isles had them, and, um, uh, and, and they usually called them body ballads, and there was, there was one in particular that that from a really young age I used to love to hear just because I I'd hear my mother cursing and that made me laugh. So, and, uh, and I remember, uh, it, and, it, and you know, I heard recordings of my father singing this. In fact, this was a song that he ended every show with it, that uh, he got an encore from. It was called The Ball of Curing War. And uh, it was written in the 1700s, mid 1700s. And um, it was about an event which took place in this village of Curiemore, Scotland. It was an orgy which took place, and apparently every member of the community was there. <laughs> apparently it took a village. <laughs> it was, or a villager, anyway. The, uh, uh, this is from a time when, when people were, were, were dirty. Not just, I mean, not just, uh, not just their minds, but like, they were just funky, you know? <laughs> They bathe, you know, twice a year, whether they needed to or not, you know. Um, you can only imagine the stench. And, uh, and so, uh, so anyhow, um, this was, a, this was a, a really fun, fun song. You know, the, the, uh, if, if we would have started this when we started the show, we'd still be about three quarters of the way through the song. Because over the years... Every troubadour, every generation of troubadours since the 1750s contributed lyrics. So there's over 80 stanzas. Each stanza represents one of the villagers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what their picadillos may have been. So um, I, I'll just, I'll, I'm not going to sing uh, more than just the, the introduction, the, the coda, or the, rather the uh, refrain, um, because um, it's... This was from a time when people's ears were dirty, and so they were they were used to hearing this kind of language. And I think the Puritan modern ear is not prepared for it. But I will uh, I will sing at least uh, the, the introduction. And this was the chorus. And this this went through the entire song between every verse. There was this. So there was 80 stanzas and 80 choruses. Um, actually, 82. Uh, one to start and one to finish. And um, and so it went something like this. Uh, Four and twenty virgins came down from Inverness, and when the ball was over, there were four and twenty less singing a balls to your partner. Ass against the wall, you've never been had on a Saturday night, never been had at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then it gets, you know, gets pro progressively uh, dirty as the song goes on. Uh, and as the drinking is is. Flowing, so well, I'll say you one more for one verse. And so, so uh, uh, let's see. Uh, the village idiot, he was there, he gave us all a laugh. No, I can't sing this one. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. Let me just put it this way. Let me put it this way. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I'll sing about the postman. The postman, okay. That's, that's a little tamer. I was, I was, um, uh, let's see. The village postman, he was there, the poor man had the box. He couldn't do the lassie, so he did the letterbox. Singing a balls to your partner, ass against the wall. You've never been had on a Saturday night, you've never been had at all. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I was about uh, eight years old, it was the late 70s, around 78, um, my mother uh, was was starting to uh, perform again for the first time in, in about 10 years. and. And um, she was um, hanging out in Los Angeles uh, a, a fair amount, even though we didn't live there. And so, so I remember getting invited to, or tagging along with her, and she was invited to this party at this uh, rock star's house in Beverly Hills. And I remember um, very little of it. Um, I think, very, I think uh, the, the uh, host of this, of this gathering ended up being the soberest person at the party and thereby volunteered to put me to sleep that night. And um, 
he was very, very sweet, and he, he tucked me in, and, and, um, and I could tell he was wondering, like, what to, he thought he should sing me a song and didn't know what, and it, he's a Scottish uh, uh, singer, and, um, and so he was thinking about what would be, like, the perfect lullaby for, like, an eight, eight or nine-year-old, and, and he came up with this one that went, uh, four and twenty virgins came down from the heaven. <laughs> And, uh, and so I felt right at home. <laughs> and uh, I will always be grateful to Rod Store for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I was in my in my twenties, I, I did a a, a tour, and um, and it was um, it was it was a Bill Graham tour, and so I got to connect with. With him, and I was I was opening the show. It was Rod Stewart, Santana, Jeff Beck, and myself, and um, and it was it was a real thrill as a you know being 21, 22 years old and, and getting to tour with these guys and open the show. A little terrifying as well, but um, but they were so supportive and encouraging, and had always been a fan of, of all of theirs. And um, and Ian McCloggan, of course, who played with with Rod Stewart for many years. He was in the faces, the small faces, and played with Dylan and the Stones. And he was just a wonderful, wonderful human being and wonderful piano player. And uh, I got turned on to this song, which, you know, I had heard as a kid, but but really never never knew. So, it, 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 you know, we're deviating from the set just a little bit because it's relevant to my life. And and uh, and so, uh, and to a time when, when I got to play this with these guys. And so uh, it, it's something that goes, like this.